go. Yeah. I wake up, flex, I'm down that check. No drip, this wet. Tell him run it up. No sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first, die stretch. Tell him run it up. I wake up, flex, I'm down that check. No drip, this wet. Tell him run it up. Well, this is definitely gonna be one of the more unique videos I've ever filmed. Hello one and all, and welcome to Scene Through Glass. A few things to update you on. Firstly, it's got cold. It's got really, really cold. I don't know what happened in the last 24 hours, but the temperature dropped from like 20 degrees to five. So I'm very unprepared because being on the road for a year means that I'm limited in what clothes I bring and I, I'm just cold. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. Secondly, I went to a barbers here in Detroit yesterday and they try to kill me I don't know if you can see that but for some reason the barber just yeah wanted to slit my throat so that was an experience oh, but I have survived so yeah apologies for the slightly weird Frankenstein looking neck uh, anyway let's get back to the point of this video cars and more specifically Hummers now ever since I was well a young man watching MTV and popular culture, Hummers have been just one of the coolest cars ever created. Obviously, originally a military vehicle, but I think sort of made cooler by the fact that back in the day, rap stars and Arnold Schwarzenegger and people like that used to drive these things around on the road. And Milspec have been sort of singerizing Hummers for a while now, basically taking the platform, replacing sort of every part you can imagine and improving the car. Also making them even cooler, if that's possible two cars behind us we're going to find out more about today as you can see two pretty different cars behind us so I'm going to bring in Ian from Millspec to talk us through what we're looking at and then we're going to be getting back into the car so we can warm ourselves up and we're going to go and crash at Cars and Coffee because there's a big one happening about 30 minutes down the road and you know what better way to turn up to a Cars and Coffee than those two things mad I wake up flex I'm down that check no drip this wet tell them run it up no sleep, no rest. Might crash, might wreck. But first, die stretch. Tell them run it off. I wake up, flex. I'm down that check. No drip, this wet. Tell them run it off. This was based off of a 1994 civilian H1. Um, this was our development truck, and we basically wanted to improve upon all of the negative aspects of the civilian H1 or the Hummer in general. So we started with the chassis and the powertrain. So we replaced the original engine with a 6.6 .6 liter Duramax uh, in an Allison 1000 transmission, which is a six speed automatic. Uh, it's been built from the block up. So it's been internally balanced and blueprinted. There's a different intake, different exhaust, different tuning. So it's about 500 horsepower and a thousand foot pounds of torque, as I said. Uh, that's good for zero to 60 in around six and a half seconds, oh which God. is pretty good for a 7,500 pound truck. Yeah, I was gonna um, say, it's huge, this thing. Yes, and you'll see when we get in it, it definitely scoots. Um, this is our company truck, so it's got a little bit more power than what we currently offer. So okay. probably closer to 600 horsepower. I was telling you earlier when we were having coffee, the typical Hummer owner is not who you'd expect. So usually they have sports cars, they have other interests, hobbies. Um, they're just fans of you know good design and, and engineering. So Adam and I were <laughs> we were joking that wow this like the H1 handles a lot better than you think because of the weight balance, and Adam's insane. So he daily drives his GT350R Mustang and loves track like going autocross events and going to the racetrack. And he was like, man, I really wish that I could take my Hummer on a track. And I was <laughs> laughing and I was like, yeah, yeah, get the heck out of here. Yeah. Like, I'm not, not going to do that. He's like, no, I think we could do it. So what turned from a powertrain test mule that we had uh, turned into kind of this snowball effect of like, let's upgrade all these components and make it uh, more autocross slash track friendly. Sure. So this thing started it getting, <laughs> getting more insane and more insane. And by the time we were done with it, we ended up with this track Hummer. So I think we should talk about it. For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Show me around. Probably now correct me if I'm wrong. It's probably the only one in the world. Uh, I definitely haven't seen one before. <laughs> yeah. This truck started life as a military Humvee and we used it as a powertrain test mule for the launch edition program. When we were done with it and we were starting to build these, we had it sitting in the back of the garage and you know, we weren't really using it very much. And you know, Adam started to, like we said, started to think about all the possibilities of how we could kind of just take this thing to the extreme. So it's got a PPE built 800 horsepower uh, turbo diesel with a Allison T6, which all of the internals are upgraded and built. Um, it has a 
completely revised coilover suspension. Uh, it has Willwood six piston brakes. It has the largest Pirelli P0s you could possibly buy. <laughs> it has a roll cage in the bottom of the, tr of the tub and then Sparco race seats and Momo Prototipo. Whole bunch of transmission coolers and all sorts of race stuff. Um, and you know it actually is surprisingly good around the track we take it to m1 concourse where we're going mm -hmm. later and we do track events with it and uh you know generally just test the powertrain as much as possible around town unbelievable and, the uh, thing looks ridiculous it doesn't look like an actual hummer it sort of looks like a hummer body on something else like yes. the proportions of it are so odd compared to something like that yes which is interesting because it's actually a Hummer like chassis. What people think that we took like a Corvette chassis, for example, and bolted a Hummer body to it. That's what it looks like. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's actually really cool because it's the original H1 chassis with a lot of revisions, obviously. Um, but you're you're really exploring the, like the complete opposite end of the spectrum. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate for this thing on on YouTube, but uh, people have actually been like. I don't know, they've given us points for, points for creativity and... There you go, hey, and you know, hate is a part of YouTube, so yeah, that's true. Don't, yeah, yeah. don't try and shy away from it. Yeah, it, makes, <laughs> it makes us smile, and I think it's something that, you know, if we we're going to go to this extreme to upgrade the off-road components and the capabilities of, of this, you know, regular H1, um, we really just wanted to see what's the other end of the spectrum look for like. For sure. It's, so. a, it's, a, it's a, you know, a way to show off what you could do or what you can do uh, as a company, but also as an individual, and yeah, I just love the the difference between the two and the fact that it exists you know yeah. <laughs> other thing I, I i've ever seen a hummer race car before you know, um, what's, what's really scary is that when we released this thing we did like a little pr release on it just for fun and uh we we're like we're just going to release it as like a one-off build i got like sales inquiries people were like people were like dude i want one like i want to build this one oh and i'm like God. uh the liability of that first of all i'm not gonna i don't think we can sell you a thousand thousand horsepower sure you know h1 on Pirelli P zeros <laughs> and expect to warranty it or, or deal with the uh, you know, after sales it nightmare that, that would be. People are slightly mad, but uh, yeah, which is funny because there's actually somewhat of a business case for a track Hummer, which is like the most ridiculous thing in 2019. We're talking about a track focused Hummer H1. What, <laughs> like I, I have to pinch myself. Like I was driving around the track one time with a McLaren 12C in front of me, and I was just like, I forgot what I was driving for a second because of how well you know it handles brakes and accelerates. Um, and I got out of it and I was like, ooh, that was really weird. <laughs> like, yeah, put this across your lap. Oh, and I see. This is, uh, you know what? You had the, I had these in these the, su the super performance Ford GT40. Oh, you did? So, okay. yeah. Do you, want to put on, do you want to put on the other ones or are you good? Uh, how, should I? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We're yeah. just going for the middle and then push down hard way. Oh, uh, yeah. Sometimes I gotta, I gotta smack it. But okay, I mean, watch your, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm really not strong, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> How embarrassing! I can't do the uh, can't do the seatbelt. Um, there you go. Hey, hey there yeah, we go. Okay. okay. Um, so yes. Uh, long story short, you find me in the race. Hummer. Uh, I've never found a car so difficult to put GoPros on. You're all the way up there. Um, Ian is all the way over there. I mean, he's so far away. It's like he's in a separate vehicle. Uh, I have one GoPro on the front that I think is just facing the bonnet. So this could be a slightly well, it might be a bad film, uh, bad video in terms of uh, angles, but it's going to be an experience, that's for sure, because, yeah, what the hell is this? Oh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's start with the basics. Uh, startup. Uh, so, how do I do that? Traditional key. Traditional key. Just, just let, it, let it cycle for a second. Okay. And then just hit it. Right. <laughs> you need to adjust your seat. It's just there's like a slide mechanism. Okay. There you go. The seat's kind of good. The seat's all right. That's a big fan. Is that yeah, way? This is for your uh, your heat. This Can I all... turn that down a little bit? Yeah. yeah. So see those see those temperature settings right there. Yeah. And that's uh, the fan there. Yeah. Let's turn it on. Okay. There we go. Just just for just for the audio. Just yeah. for you guys. I might not have great angles, but uh, I mean he's going to try and have great audio. Um, Apart from that, it is an automatic, obviously a big huge thing like this, we haven't got a manual gearbox, so I've got a huge lever over here, which is going to put into drive. Um, any like just tips, like... Just, just get it on the road, Okay. and then you'll be surprised how easy it is to drive after that. And then once you get used to how wide it is, we'll start playing with the boost. Sure, so if you couldn't hear him, because he is three miles away, uh, he said, get it on the road, get used to how wide it is, and then we'll start playing with the boost. <laughs> oh, 40 pounds of it. Oh, 40 pounds of it, yeah. So that's the thing for me that I'm gonna, I think, struggle to get used to the most, is just how huge this thing is. Fine, we're not that high in this kind of race car, uh, but we are super wide. But anyway, we'll give a big 
thumbs up uh, to the guys in front. Let me see. Uh, I guess, are you my sighter on that yeah, side? So yeah, you can, you can let me know if I'm headed towards any children or telephone poles. Just crank all the way. Because you know, this, with this Not camera, amazing turning no, circles. amazing turning radius on this okay. one. Right, here we go, in the beast. <laughs> the noise is similar to how I imagine driving a semi-truck. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Can you guys still hear me? I don't know. This is so bizarre. I feel like the right side of the car might be in the completely wrong lane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's really hard to know where to place the actual vehicle. The Ian saying to keep my sort of almost my left tire yeah. on the left edge of the lane and right. then I should still kind of, I should be in it. I tell you what's great is the brakes. Like I've only had to use them like twice, very minimally, but they're they're reassuringly grabby. Yeah, that's reassuring. In a car this size, and you know how much power it's got, you kind of feel a little bit more confident having that that brake pedal feel at least. Uh, apart from that, the wheel is a little bit offset, which I guess is to do with the setup of the car. So. I would expect maybe the steering wheel to be here, but it's a little bit there, but you know, we're not gonna knock that. Lamborghinis have the same thing. <laughs> uh, people like them. So, uh, on an initial, like the first 10 or 20% of the throttle pedal, it's not insane, but you can probably hear it and I can feel it when you start to accelerate a little bit more. The beast doth appear. It kind of, it kind of wants you to open it up, doesn't it? Like yeah. it's sort of hinting at that fact. It's got a personality. Yeah. And because we're not that high, I don't inherently feel like I want to take a right and dive off through the trees. Because no. we're quite low, like, yeah, it's wide and it's military. But, it, you know, I think if we were in the other car, then we would just want to drive over everything. I just feel like I need to shout America a lot. And <laughs> I had this, I drove a Challenger Scat Pack once and I was just like, yeah! <laughs> the fact I had a foot part break, I was like, it's the best thing ever! Yeah. It kind of reminds me of that experience. I'm also checking my huge wing mirrors quite often. Oh, that okay. so there's, a, there's a little, little bit of boost. Yeah. It just sounds mean. <laughs> it sounds good. Yeah. It sounds good. That's just a bizarre sensation. I told you it's messed up, man. It's weird, it's Frankenstein. It's just Frankenstein. Oh, it's quick. Oh, it's quick. Oh, this is the most bizarre experience ever. Not what I expected from a Hummer. And just, I mean, the noise is awesome, though. Yeah. And then, I think because of the size, you don't really realize how quickly you're going. But like, you, you're going quick, quickly. We have a traditional red light, Fast and the Furious, Hummer style. Oh. What's the retail of one of those? <laughs> this is so insane. But also because it's kind of like military spec in here and it's not a you know luxury, road car, yeah, this, this is feels a even box. more like... You got a Pelican case for a glove box. Nice. Yeah, this feels like angry. Okay, so we're gonna do this when it hits green, we just put it in. Yeah, I would just, this is where it gets a little... Good thing your diff's not locked. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, none of that was actually hooked. Oh my god! We were like skewing like yeah. sideways all over the shop. I feel so sorry for whoever was behind us. Yeah, no, we're good. Oh. <laughs> I get the feeling that maybe Cars and Coffee is finished because we've turned up at the location. The gates are closed and security are basically saying, yeah, no, turn around. <laughs> so that, uh, that might have been a bit of a fail, but I don't really care because I launched this car from a red light. Well, that was ridiculous. Um, 
absolutely insane. Uh, by the way, you may recognize that, yes, we are back at Platinum. Um, we left my car here whilst I jumped into the Hummer. Um, I don't think you can call it a Hummer, because it's just not, it's just a sort of totally bizarre car. I would have to say that I prefer the idea of and the look of the sort of standard mil-spec car, so the sort of James Bond, end of the world looking thing. Um, the track car is hilarious and quite terrifying. I mean, I nearly killed all of us at that launch from the red light. Um, but it was just, yeah, an experience and something that, yeah, I definitely haven't experienced before and I'm not sure I want to experience again. <laughs> um, but bravo to them for creating it. A uh, bit of a shame that Cars and Coffee was over, but we kind of knew we were running that risk. Uh, and anyway, it's now time for me to depart from Detroit. Um, it's been an amazing couple of days. I hope you guys have enjoyed the content. I hope you guys have enjoyed today's mental video. If you want to learn more about Millspec, I'll put a link to them below. Give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe for plenty more videos to come. I wake up, flex, I'm down that check, no drip this, wet. tell them run it up, no sleep, no rest, might crash, might wreck, but first die, stretch, tell them run it up, I wake up, flex, I'm down that check, no drip this, wet.